Good morning and welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church where we worship, grow, and serve Christ together. I am Pastor Bob, the associate pastor here, and Pastor Steve and I, along with the rest of the staff, want to welcome you to worship this morning. If you don't already have a church home, we invite you to come grow with us. Join one of our small groups that meet online each week. You can join us for worship online on Sundays, and you can give to support the many ministries that are still ongoing to serve the poor in our community. You can find information about all three of these on our website at asburydowntown.org. We are glad you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Worship is adapted from Ezekiel 34, 11 to 16. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them, as shepherds look after their scattered flocks when they are with them. So will the Lord look after God's sheep. I will tend them in good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. God will be the one to tend God's sheep, and to search for the lost. God will bring back the strays and strengthen the weak. Let us worship God. 
Years ago, Carrie and I worked on a farm in Port Republic. John was a great guy who taught me a lot about farming. He had two sets of turkey houses on the farm, and when they were all full, we had 44,000 turkeys on the farm. He also had a few head of cattle and about 100, 125 sheep. John was known all over the country for his registered Suffolk sheep. John also had a few goats on the farm. He kept the goats so that when a mother sheep couldn't nurse, uh, he would feed the lamb with the goat's milk. One of the interesting thing about sheep and goats is that you could always tell the difference. Whether they're corralled tightly in a pen or scattered off on the hillside in a field, you can easily distinguish between the two. A sheep's tail hangs down and a goat's tail stands up. If all you can see is the tail, you can tell if it's a sheep or a, a goat. <clears throat> in our gospel reading today, Jesus says that when he comes back for the final judgment, it will be easy for him to tell his sheep from the goats. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? or needing clothes, and clothes clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I wondered in reading that passage, why sheep and goats? I think maybe there are a couple of reasons. First, raising sheep was something that no matter who the crowd was, who it was that Jesus was talking to, they would have known something about raising sheep. Sheep was one of the main food sources. Everyone raised sheep. Second, sheep and goats are different. Now, if you've ever seen a sheep and a goat together, you might think, look at them and think, yeah, this is obvious, they are different. But there are more than differences than just their appearance. A sheep is mild, calm, useful, obedient. All the shepherd has to do is call the sheep and they will come running. Jesus said, 
my sheep know my voice and follow me. Sheep are not like most livestock. They don't have to be herded. They will follow the shepherd wherever he or she leads them. Goats, on the other hand, are stubborn, disobedient, rebellious. You can't keep a goat in a pen. If a goat wants out, the goat will get out. So this parable isn't really about sheep and goats. God doesn't prefer sheep over goats. Adam Clark had this to say, sheep, which have ever been considered as the emblems of mildness, simplicity, patience, and usefulness, represent here the genuine disciples of Christ. Goats, which are naturally quarrelsome, lascivious, and excessively ill-scented, well, sheep don't smell very good either, were considered the symbols of riotous, profane, and impure men and women. The sheep are those who have faith in Christ, who are true disciples, and the goats are those who are not following Jesus. And Jesus says that when he comes in his glory, he will sit on the throne and judge between his sheep and the goats. The way Jesus tells the difference is how we have lived our lives, our behavior. Now, I want to be sure that you understand that I'm not talking about works righteousness. We cannot earn our salvation, but our salvation is evident in what we do, in how we treat others. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And then, of course, the goats represent those who haven't fed the hungry, and clothe the naked. Those who are self-centered rather than Christ-centered. We have an interview that Betsy Peters, our adult ed director, did with Deborah Bontz about our ministry with the poor here at Asbury. We want to show you that now. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. I am so glad to be able to get a chance to talk with you and find out how the showers and laundry ministry is going and hear hear from you. Um, how are things going as you try as you're doing laundry and showers within the COVID time? It's going well. Uh, what we did is we bought laundry bags for them and they each have their name on them and they come and they check their laundry in in the morning and I have a list to know whose bag it is. And then I, I set it back at the laundry door and my volunteer takes them in and, and they wash them. And the laundry bag that has their name on it either sits on the top of the washer and the top of the drawer so we'll know whose clothes they are or if it's dirty as it has been because of the rain. We wash it and when it comes out, it still has their name on it and so we know whose clothes they are. So one of the things I wanted to ask you is what can we do to help and support the ministry? Okay, I wrote some things down. Okay. Um, we need, we are in need of combs and you can buy the dollar store comes the cheap combs, uh, razors. They don't like the dollar store razors as well, but they use those and we can always use uh, undies, okay. uh, more men's than women and deodorant. Um, uh, those are big things that we need. Um, they, they've been asking for band-aids because as they're walking, they, they get blisters on their feet and... Oh, uh, some ibuprofen, uh, some Tums. One guy came in a couple of weeks ago and told, I know personal business about these people, <laughs> and he wanted some uh, Metamucil tablets because he, he wasn't regular. And so I, I bought them for him, and he uh, he's come in several times to tell me what a blessing it was and that it would last him for a while. And 
Um, other things that I do, uh, I don't know if you all know that there's a computer downstairs now, and I use that for letting them look for jobs. They look for apartments, and a guy came in the other day, and uh, I helped him to fill out the application for way to go uh, to try to get transportation. He has a job. He just has to have transportation, and he's going to get a second job. Other things that I thought of is if I had some gift certificates from fast food places that are downtown that I could hand out to them for a meal um, when they come in. And, and, and because a lot, all, like right now we're out of bag lunches and so we're kind of makeshifting putting them together until okay. we can get some made. And so if I had a gift certificate so they could take it to, to get some food. Another thing is as it's been so hot uh, I've, I have out of my pocket bought bottled water for them because it's so important to stay hydrated. I've seen several people who um, have gotten dehydrated and, and you know crazy things happen to your body. I think it's very important to have water too. Okay. Now would, would you think that it would be that would they drop these things off at the church or would you if they donate specifically for those type of things? What would be oh. best, do you think? Or it, they could drop them off at the church. I'm here on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10, I say 10 until 3, but I'm 10 until 4 or 5. Uh, on Thursdays, I, I usually book someone in to take to the food bank, someone who has gotten a home okay. uh, to take to the food bank uh, to get food. And I'm taking somebody today, so I'll, I'll be leaving at like 3.30 today. But usually I'm here until then, and, or they could... Um, message me on Facebook or send me a text and I will get Kevin to put my number so that if they wanted to text me they could or call okay. and, and we'll arrange a time to to, to pick this stuff up. Okay. Um, other things that we need I was just thinking uh, like I have a, a gentleman who um, it's good stories and sad stories um, I, I thought he was on his way to, to follow his goal. He has, um, he's college educated and he was a chef and he thought that he had a job at a, at a restaurant uh, out of state. So uh, he packed up his belongings. He's from here. He's a local person. He packed up everything in his, his uh, rented truck and he drove just to, down to South Carolina, actually to Georgia to only find out that the restaurant wasn't going to be open for four or five more weeks. So he said that the living situation down there was much worse than here. So he turned around and came back. So that was like $1,500 that he, that he lost because it, it didn't serve him a purpose. And he came back and was real depressed. And you know, he's looking for odd jobs and he's a good worker. Uh, he's, he's done some things around the church. He's a real good worker. If anybody needs you know, yard work done or, or painting or any, any small jobs uh, to do that, it, but they would have to come pick him up because he doesn't have transportation. But if somebody wanted to donate a car, that would give him transportation to get around to. Okay. So that's, that's another thing I would just thought of. Okay. I'll let you ask some more questions. Well, I'll quit talking. Yeah, oh, well, just, I'm very passionate about what I do. We, we can tell that, <laughs> and it is, it is just amazing to see all that you are doing. Um, now, let's see. So you are doing the lunches still, but absolutely, can, okay, that's yes, yeah, good. and and it's come. The money's come out of the funds at the church, church. and it costs us. Uh, I was I was figuring up about a dollar and a half uh, to a dollar seventy five per bag. Well, Deborah, I just, I know I speak for the whole Asbury family. We are just so thankful for you and your leadership in this ministry and all you are doing. And we know you're making so much difference in so many people's lives. I hope so. And we just thank you and pray for you and this ministry. Pray for the homeless, too. Pray for them. I, I am very passionate, and, and I, I get upset with people that criticize the homeless. And I think if I had to carry everything I owned on my back, everywhere I went and not know when I could go to the bathroom and not where I have to worry about the police running you off. Um, you know, how, could I, how could I go to a job and, and not have a shower? And, and, you know, and, and it just, it's sad to see that. Um, and, 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 and what are you going to do with your things during the day? And, and you know, if you're hungry, you know, we go out and open up our snack cabinet and get something and, you know, 
they have it on their back in their back if they've been lucky enough to have something. And I, when I was buying the food for the lunch bags, uh, somebody, one of the, the baggers said, is this for the real homeless or the fake ones downtown? I said, trust me, they are not fake. And that they're, they're real, they're for real. And if anybody wants to know their stories, I, I, I know their stories and I know what their underwear looks like. Because <laughs> I've washed them. <laughs> but, but I am very passionate about it. And, and I wish people would be an advocate for the homeless instead of judging. And, and I always say, what would Jesus do? And what would Mary and Joseph have done if someone wouldn't have opened up the barn? To, and, and these people would be happy to have a barn to sleep in. And one of them does sleep in a shed. And I take food to him on Saturdays. <laughs> so, Deborah, thanks so You're much welcome. for everything you do and for chatting with us today. Can you tell that Deborah and those who work in and support that ministry are sheep? I would say they are definitely sheep. But this morning is not about making you feel bad if you're not volunteering with our homeless ministry. I want to be sure that you also understand we are not all called to volunteer in that ministry. Some of you are called to that, and we expect to see you on Tuesday at 11 a.m. to help with laundry and showers. But not everyone is called to that ministry. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 to 30, Paul writes to the believers in Corinth. He says, you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. First, God has placed apostles in the church. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Then he has given to the church miracles and gifts of healing. He has also given the gift of helping others and the gift of guiding the church. God also has given the gift of speaking in different kinds of languages. Is everyone an apostle? Is everyone a prophet? Is everyone a teacher? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? There are a lot of ways to serve Christ in this church and in the community beyond. As a part of our worship each week, you see Robin and Dan and Dana and Roger and Kathy and many others who are serving through the music ministry here. Bill and Dave and Phil and Hartley and many others serve by leading our Sunday school cl classes and small groups. Mike and, and Matt are helping with the legal work we need to continue our work at Kenny's house. As soon as we get the easement signed, we are ready to move forward with the water and septic for Kenny. Glenn, Sonny, Ellen, Richard, and many, many more of you have been involved with the mission trips and local mission projects. Celia and Becky and many others have helped with donated to the apartment at Mercy House. Bill volunteers as a chaplain for ICM. Joe and Jean are involved with the Gideon ministry, putting God's word in the hands of people around the world. Many of you have donated money and supplies to the many ministries that we as a church are involved in. You might remember Bill's ask from last week for money to sponsor a music intern. Some of you will write a check to help with that this week. Many of you here are faithful sheep. Your faith in Christ shows through your service to others in the church and out into the community. One interesting thing about this passage for me is that when the sheep received their inheritance for their service to the king, they were surprised. They said, when did we see you hungry and give you something to eat? When did we see you naked and clothe you? They were surprised. I wondered if it is because when we are deep in a relationship with Christ, our service to him and others just becomes natural. Is it an instinctual thing that we do? Does serving others come natural to us? Do we simply hear of a need and ask, what can I do to help? If that is true, if serving others is a natural response to our relationship with Christ, then if we aren't involved 
in some way in serving others, does that mean we need to consider our relationship with Christ? What is going on in our relationship with Christ that we don't feel the need to serve? Where are you in your relationship with Jesus Christ? 2 Peter 3.18 tells us, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. I want to invite you to get to know Jesus. Understand His life and His ministry better. Invite Him into your heart and life, and the desire to serve will grow in you. As you grow, model your life after Jesus's. What is it that God is calling you to do? The more like Jesus we become, the more our lives are poured out in service to others. Live out your life in faith in Christ. Come, worship, grow, and serve with us. Let us pray. Most holy and merciful God, your Son modeled leadership and servanthood for us. But we confess we have elevated our desires and plans over your will for our lives and for the world. We want authority and power over others to use for our own purposes. Forgive us for our, our half-hearted devotion and our double-minded attention to your way. Remind us you desire servants first and foremost. Enable us to serve in the name of Jesus, the one who came to serve and give his life a ransom for many. In his name this day we pray. Amen. connect us during this time of being apart so I want to remind you to join us in our prayer challenge here at Asbury to participate all you have to do is commit to praying 30 minutes a week for the Asbury family and its ministries pick a time that works for you and be consistent so it becomes a habit if you prefer to pray here at Asbury pastor Steve is in the sanctuary uh, on Thursdays from 7 to 8 a.m. Please wear a mask and maintain social distance and come join him. To date, we've had five people who have let Pastor Steve know that they are accepting the challenge to pray. So please join us in praying for our Asbury family and our witness in the world.